Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. So today, we are going to put together the CAR, coffee and ham radios, Cartena Poseidon, which is the vertical antenna that we just released this past week. Now this is based on a Rybakov design, uh, which is the Russian word that means fisherman, apparently. And so, because we name all our antennas like Greek gods, we're going to go with Poseidon on this because he was the Greek god of the sea. This is the kit that you will receive if you order a Poseidon from us. And these are available on our website, coffeeandhamradios.com. You can see the dingus right there. And they are $84.99 plus shipping. What do you get when you get a Poseidon kit? Well, you get all of this. Now, you get the winder. This is the Cartena winder. This is our design. Uh, this is not 3D printed. This is PA12 nylon. This is not 3D printed. This is created with um, what's called multi-jet fusion. And these things are tough. They are weather resistant. They are sun resistant, UV resistant, and won't slag down like 3D printed PLA winders would if they're exposed to sunlight for an extended time. So you get that. You'll get a couple of pieces of wire, magnet wire. Mine have been somewhat straightened out. You will get two little coils of magnet wire. We're gonna to have to use those to wrap the toroid. You'll get this piece. This is a pre-production prototype that was 3D printed by Chuck for me for this kit. This is a kind of a dress rehearsal pre-production kit. You'll get everything in here just like you see it with the exception of this. You'll get this piece in PA12 nylon multi-jet fusion as well. So what this piece is for is this can go on top of many masts and it will slide down and then you can hook the end of your antenna on it and raise your mast up and it'll hold your wire. And then when you're done, drop the mast, pop that off the top of the antenna and put everything away. Pretty cool, huh? You may or may not want to use this piece. You may not need to use this piece. We've included it for convenience. Of course, you're going to get a Coffee and Ham Radio sticker. You're going to get a 100-foot spool of BN Tech Go 22 gauge wire. I have orange in this particular box. Colors may vary. It just depends on what we buy. We buy it in bulk. So we don't, we don't sell these with specific wire colors. You, you will get a piece of shrink wrap to put around the winder and the toroid when you're done. You're going to get some shrink wrap tubing to go over the connections. When you're almost finished, you're going to get zip ties. We include six zip ties, so you can get everything latched down and in place and tightened up. We're going to include a Velcro strap. This can be used, this actually has two purposes that you can use this for. Of course, when the antenna is not deployed, you can wrap this around your radio wires and your radiator wire and get them all coiled up and it'll keep everything nice and neat on the winder and you can throw it in a go bag or go box, whatever. It'll keep the wire from getting unruly. Of course, we're going to include the BNC bulkhead connector to make the antenna do the business. One screw and bolt to fasten wires down to your frame. Two ring terminals. This is for your radio connection. Of course, you're going to get a toroid. These are FT14043 toroids. And Ape and Chuck went through a lot of testing with this toroid and the wrap we're going to do. We got excellent results. Ape showed an APRS, a PSK reporter map the other day in our private Discord, and he was tearing it up. He had Europe, he had South America, he had VK, he had South Africa. So between South Africa and Australia, he was getting out. And he was running FT8 at 85 watts. So our design works. And, and guys, you don't, you don't see all the behind the scenes. Those two guys, KK6USY Chuck and Ape, no call sign known, go through a lot of testing when they build these. In the kit, this is everything you will get on the website, coffeeandhamradios.com. We have a link to our GitHub page, which has a copy of the Poseidon build instructions. And this was done by Ape and Chuck and vetted by me and Steve as well. And we think we have everything pretty good for building an antenna. So without further ado, let's take a quick run through. 
the instructions and see what we've got. So this explains what the Cartena is. This is the information that's on the website. Our recommended configuration for this is 25 foot vertical element and four 17 foot radials. With 100 feet of wire, you have enough wire to do that with a little bit left over. So that is the description. And then we get into the meat of the business. We include our parts list, which I've already gone over for us. And then we start doing our instructions. So we are gonna follow the instructions exactly like they are and get this sucker built. Okay, so the first step we're gonna do is put the BNC connector on the frame. And Chuck has some very specific instructions in here about how we wanna mount this on our frame. So when you get ready to do this, something to be aware of with these adapters. They don't go through like this. You don't push this through. You push the threaded piece through because that's what we want to grab onto with our washer and our grounding tab. So we're gonna put that on there. And then we're gonna put on our grounding tab and we want it going to what is the left side if you're looking at it like this. and then crank this guy down. So we have this on and it matches the picture that Chuck is showing us here. So here, you can see the grounding tab coming over here because we're looking at it the other way. That is the right side. That's where our wires are gonna go. So when we're looking at it like this, it's gonna be on the left side, all right? So it should be set up like that. Attach the screw and the two wire terminals to the left of the BNC attachment point. So as you can see, they're right there when we're oriented like so. Now Chuck is talking about putting on our screw and the two wire terminals up here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And they go in this hole right here. All right, so you should end up with something that looks like that. There is our grounding tab. Here is our nut with the wires. And that lines up with what Chuck is showing in the picture. All right, the next piece is winding the toroid. So we have our toroid, we have our magnet wire, and you're gonna need a couple of zip ties for this, which is why we included six in the kit. So what we're gonna do is use the zip ties to hold the magnet wire to the toroid when we start our wrap. What we wanna end up with is something that looks similar to this. And feel free to use toro or, uh, use toroids, use zip ties as appropriate to hold this down to make sure you get it the way you want it to do. Now, Chuck also gave me another little pro tip because Chuck is a pro. And what he suggested was, when you, before you wrap this, and this is interesting because his picture doesn't show this, but he said, mark it at 12 o'clock, six o'clock, three o'clock, nine o'clock, and then halfway in between. So there is where our wires should end up. Now, how much does it matter? I don't know. Also, I'm not entirely sure that that marker is not gonna rub off on my hand. But if you look at the picture, that is not exactly how Chuck wrapped this. And again, how much that matters, I don't, I don't think it does significantly. So whatever you're comfortable with. If you want to go with a wrap like this, with a little bit of free space down here at the bottom, and if you orient it like that, you can see he started here about 7 o'clock and about 4 o'clock uh, when he did his wrap and took this picture. So with that being said, we're going to do my very favorite thing in the entire world ever is wrap magnet wire around a toroid, not. Now it's important when you wrap this that these wires don't cross over each other. So when you're wrapping it, you need to make sure as you're wrapping it that you don't get the wires twisted. As you can see here, they're not crossed over each other in this picture. You want them side by side, they are touching obviously, and the wire's enameled, so that's fine but you don't want to have these things all twisted up and crisscrossed. So with that being said, we want to keep about two and a half inches out of the end of the wires. 
And see what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that as I go, my wires stay side by side and not crossed over. So what we're gonna do now is get our zip tie and zip tie this bad boy down. All right, so again, I wanna make sure that my wires are not crossing over as I pull them through the toroid. So pay attention to that as you go, just take your time. I'm generally a fairly impatient person and I just don't, uh, I just don't enjoy wrapping toroids. <laughs> if I had my way, I would just uh, buy pre-wrapped toroids and move on. But we're not selling it that way, we're selling it as a kit. So that's how it's gonna go. And see with that, with that zip tie holding those now, I can get the rest of this fairly tight. And I, I gotta say that Chuck and Ape are masters, absolute masters, living legends at wrapping toroids because I'm gonna wrap this and it's not gonna look anything nearly as good as the picture or anything that Chuck or Ape have done. <laughs> And what we're looking for here is just what I'm showing here. Our two wires side by side. I'm gonna try and evenly space them on my marks. And, and this isn't super critical. This is just for neatness, a lot of it. But I wanna make sure as I go on the back side that I don't get my wires twisted. Okay, future Jim here. At this moment, I screwed the pooch. Didn't catch this until later when I was trying to test the antenna. These two wires got crossed right here. Because of that, my two center wires were not the correct two center wires. Connected everything up, it wasn't working. I had extremely high SWR or infinity on SWR. Make sure you pay attention to that and closely examine your toroid. Pay attention. Now back to past Jim. And I end up with crossed wires. Also, when you're doing this, I found that if you push the back side and then pull a little bit then you can get it nice and tight on the toroid and it's going to slide even with the zip tie on as you can see here and that's fine it doesn't have to be lined up with the marks we just want to get it fairly even those are for reference and you can use those or not use those it was a little pro tip chuck gave me so i'm sharing it with y'all we're looking for eight turns which is every time the wire goes through the toroid that's a turn all right so eight times, which should line up exactly with the number of marks I have. Okay, we've got our wrap finished. And as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight turns through all right so that completes our wrap and then we're going to probably put another zip tie on this to make sure that everything is going to stay in place okay so we've got our toroid wrapped the next thing we got to do is we need to scrape ends off of scrape the enamel off of wires and we want to take these two center wires and connect them together per the picture here. All right, if I didn't get my wires crossed, we should have continuity between the outer two wires. That's my inner two wires. My outer two wires, and they do not cross over. So that is an easy verification to make sure that you didn't get your pair of wires twisted when you were wrapping the toroid because it's critical to the design that we do the right wires for this little process. So now what we've got to do is let's pull those aside, our outer wires for the time being, get them out of the way. And these two wires need to be fastened together. So I need to scrape off a whole lot and we want to do this as close to the toroid. So twist and solder the two center wires, keeping the connection as close to the toroid as possible. Leave one wire long enough to insert into the center connector of the BNC. You should have continuity between the two outer wires at this point. And we've proven that we do, and we also have continuity between the two inner wires. So these two wires 
need to get soldered together. The instructions are a little unclear here, but following the picture, you can see that the center wires go together. All right. And when he talks about making one wire long enough, that's one of these outer wires that are going to be our ground and our, or our radials and our radiator. Okay, so we're going to fasten our red wires, our red wires, our center wires together. And I didn't follow, I didn't understand the instructions completely here. And you can't see it in this picture because this is a black and white printer. But if you look real close at that picture, you can see here at the top, there is a wire that's long. And that is our center conductor for our antenna. So the short wire, we're going we're gonna to shave this off, shave off the enamel here in the center and then on the end of this shorter wire and wrap it around that and then that gets soldered. We do need to leave one of these long, this guy, because that's going to be our center conductor for our antenna. This is our antenna connector up here. Pretend that's red. This is our center tap, the blue arrow, and then this is our ground conductor, ground connector, the orange arrow. All right. So that is how this is going to go and that clearly shows these don't get connected and cut off. You've got to leave this one long because that's going to go to the center tap of our BNC connector. So now that we've got the enamel sanded off, what we want to do is we want to fasten these two together a couple of times. And then we'll end up with this kind of situation here. And we can clip that off. We're going to solder that guy. All right, so now this is our picture right here. So that's all done. Our toroid is wound. I'm going to set this picture aside for reference as we mount it. So now we want to put the toroid on the frame. And what we want to do is, first of all, I'm going to orient this like our picture. And we're going to mount the toroid here. And you can see what we want is this guy is going to go into here and get soldered. This one is going to go over here like so. This will be our antenna wire and then this one will be our, our ground wire slash radial connector. So we want to use some more of our zip ties and attach it to the frame. Alright, since we've got the toroid wrapped, now what we want to do is this guy needs to get soldered into the BNC connector there and then this one needs to go over here to connect up to one of these ground lugs. So what I'm going to do is figure out what length and I'm going to do this before I fasten down this toroid so I have a fair idea of how long I need to cut these wires. So this one doesn't need to be nearly that long. I'm going to cut a little bit off of it and then sand yet more enamel off of it and fasten it to that connector and crimp it on real good. And once I have these ready, then I'm going to solder some stuff. So let's, uh, let's do the cutting. I'm going to hold this about where I want it. And then we are going to cut, let's try and center that up a little bit. We're going to cut this thing. Trim that back just a little. And we're going to cut this right about there. We don't need it super long. We just need it long enough to go in there. I'm going to actually cut a little longer than I want. So that guy and then this one, we're going to cut him back to about here. Yep. Right about there. All right. So <clears throat> Then I'm going to get these wires in place and get them soldered and crimped in. Hey guys, Future Jim here once again, which means something got screwed up. Looking over here at the picture where I've got it circled, I completely missed putting the ground wire through the tab, which means there was no ground on this. So that was mistake number two. It says to do this in the instructions. I missed that part. So I had to go back and readjust wires. Not only did I have to cut and re-solder ends on these wires from my crossing the wires in the toroid as I showed you earlier, but I also had to go back and add a jumper to this one so that I could get 
the ground wire, the correct ground wire through that tab. So don't miss that step. You need to pull that inner ground wire through the tab and scrape the enamel off there so you can solder it to that ground tab. That is important. All right, back to past Jim. So now that I have the wires at the length I want, we'll do a little more sanding on this guy. And it is critical that you get a lot of clean copper to make this connection because if you don't get that enamel off, your connection won't be very good. And let's get our toroid mounted in there like that. And let's get some zip ties and let's fasten this guy down. And I'm going to tell you straight up, it's a whole lot easier to fasten this down if you get that center conductor in there before you start zip tying stuff. All right, our toroid is fastened in place. We could put a couple more zip ties through it if we wanted, but I think two is going to be sufficient. This is going to be soldered there, so that's fine. Let's put on our connector for our ground lug. And let me get some crimpers and let's crimp that bad boy down. And the way I like to do these, especially when I'm trying to get the orientation of the wire, is to get the ring terminal in the crimper and ratchet it down just before it makes tension and squeezes the crimp. And then stick our wire in and make sure it's where we want it. And then finish our crimp. And then I'm going to come back and solder these because I don't trust crimps and that didn't grab that wire very well. So we are ready to do some soldering. Let's fire up the beast. Okay, she's all soldered in place. So this wire is gonna go over here and become our ground slash radio connector. And this is gonna be our actual antenna wire. So let's take a look at the next steps and then keep pressing on. We're close. We've got our toroid mounted, all good. We've done all that, we've crimped, we've soldered, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so what we need to do is measure out 24, 25 feet and four inches of our antenna wire. This is the orange BN Tech Go wire. And then we wanna fold over that four inches and secure it. And I've just used zip ties here. You can put heat shrink on this if you want as well. So this is our main antenna element. So at the end of the frame, and I don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera, there is a hole right here that you can barely see. And the wire goes in there and then comes out like so. And then we're gonna take it over the top here Pull that through there like that, like so. So through the end, up through that hole, down through that hole, on the back side, and then back up right here, like so. And this is how we're going to attach our actual radiating element and that's going to get fastened to this wire here and now that antenna wire is in there nice and tight and it's got a built couple of points for built-in strain relief our little knot and the other the uh, going through the little holes like we have it so then we want to hook this in here and then we can solder that Okay, so our element is now soldered on there, like so. We have our little strain relief knot in there, and we've got all our slack pulled out of the end. That is what I've got. Now we wanna slide the heat shrink over that connection, which I didn't do, oops. So we're gonna cheat and do it like that, which will be fine. Let's cut a little bit of this off. 
And we just want to keep this from shorting out against the ground or anything else. So we'll do that like so. And let's pull our slack back up. And then put our heat shrink over all of it like so. All right, now we can pull it back down, take our slack out of our wire, and that's good to go like that. All right, we've got the heat shrink, and that is finished. Chuck mentions here, and I would reiterate this, don't apply the large heat shrink to the whole thing until we've got it tested. So now we need to make our ground plane, and that is what this other uh, ring terminal is going to come in use for. So what we're going to do is we're going to peel off four 17-foot pieces of wire, strip the ends, put them together, tin them up, and put them in this ring terminal, and that's going to go over here, and we'll fasten it back down with our nut, and we will be done building the antennae part of the antenna. All right, and then our next step after that, <clears throat> Okay, the last piece that we need to do to finish our antenna build is to do our radials. And we recommend four 17-foot radials. So we're going to strip off the ends of each of our wires here. I love silicone wire because it strips real easy. Is We're going to want to twist all of these bad boys together into one bundle and then we're going to solder it up. Our solder's all nice and flowed into there. And let's crimp our connector on. So like before, what I'm going to do is put it in the tool. And in this case, orientation's not going to matter a whole lot one way or the other. And put it in there. And give it a crimp and actually because I love solder we're gonna go ahead and solder that bad boy to the connector too and we're gonna come over here to our antenna unit and we're gonna mount that guy on there like that put our once again put our nut on like so and I would recommend you use a pair of pliers to hold it so you get a good tight electrical connection all right, that is done. There's our antenna wire over here. Okay guys, so I've got the antenna done and I did a little bit of testing and I did it two ways just to see the difference. And I, I originally tested this in my shop with the antenna laying on the bench, no radials attached to it, but the antenna wire deployed across the floor of my shop around the corner to the other side of the building. And that was how I set it up. I did my initial testing with the rig expert right there, and the SWR values were pretty dang good. Excellent SWR. This antenna is designed to be used with a tuner, so I still had SWR values that were acceptable. This picture right here is with the antenna deployed as built. So my build right now is on a carbon, or not a carbon fiber, a... Uh, Fiberglass mast raised up the base of the antenna. The feed point is about six, eight inches off the ground. It's being fed with RG8X coax, and I have four radials deployed. And this is the SWR across the bands. So going from right to left on this, this is the six meter band here, and this is the three. 0.0 SWR line right here. So you can see six meters is below three. Then moving down, this should be 10 meters here. And as you can see, it is about 2.1, 2.2 or lower where the line crosses the 10 meter band. And then uh, you can't see on this picture because it's so small, but here is 15 or 12 meters right here. And again, we're, we're below two SWR on 12 meters. And then we have 15 meters here, and we're about three, right at three across the entire 15 meter band. And then down here on 17, we're 
also right at three across the entire 17 meter band. 20 meters, we're just slightly above three across most of 20 meters. And then we go to 30 here, or excuse me, 40. And there's 40 right there. And 40 is looking pretty good. In the middle of this is 30. And you can't, I think this purple line is probably 30. And we're about 3.2 to 3.4 on the 30 meter band. There's 40. 40, we're below three. And then here is 60 meters, which this is not designed for 60 meters, but well tunable. Now, at uh, 80 meters, things get kind of stupid. So here's the thing. If you have a tuner that goes beyond three to one, you can probably tune in 60 and, and 80. It's not going to be the best, most efficient use of this antenna. It's not really what it's designed for, but it will tune. I have tuned it with a uh, with my flex tuner, and I've done contacts on 60 meters. This is designed to be used with a tuner. There's a few bands that really don't require a tuner. And in most cases, you can see here that you can tune this with the onboard tuner of any radio that has one built in, because almost all those onboard jobs are three to one. So you should be able to get this tuned into submission easily enough. And the deployment on this is very easy. So that is what the SWR on this looks like. The other thing that I did a quick picture of, this was my first uh, go round with FT8. I ran FT8 on my flex at about 60 watts, maybe 50 watts for a couple, three hours when I got the antenna stuck up. And again, my antenna is not tied off. It's not standing in the open. It's leaned up in a magnolia tree. So as you can see, this antenna is working great. I was heard or talked in VK from Alaska down to VK. I'm right here somewhere buried under the pink blob. Uh, Europe was lit up like a Christmas tree, as of course was the United States. We got South Africa. We got Namibia, possibly. Uh, Mozambique or Madagascar. I can't tell where that's at. Uh, all the way down into South America. So the antenna works really well. Okay, that's going to about wrap the build portion of this video up. Guys, I think this is a great antenna. It is very easy to build, and I'm not the world's greatest antenna builder. That is Ape and, the, and Chuck. Antenna building is not really my jam. However, I didn't think this was a very complicated build, and it didn't take that long to build. Maybe an hour, a couple hours. Go slow, take your time, Double check your work, because as you saw in the video, if you've stayed this far, you know that I had a couple of little gotchas that uh, I had some problems with. Other than that, not a big deal. Super easy to deploy. You could throw this uh, up over a tree limb. You just need to get it all the way vertical for it to work correctly. And you want the base of the unit about six inches off the ground, and you're good to go. I used a mast. As I said, leaned it up in a tree and I've got it connected to my flex radio and it's working super great. I've been using it daily since I got it built, which was Thursday, uh, doing FT8. And you saw some of my contact maps uh, a minute or two ago. So as you can see, it actually is working very well. This is probably our best antenna in my opinion so far. Certainly the easiest build we have uh, out of the four antennas that that Coffee and Ham Radios has designed. And kudos to the Smokin' Ape and KK6USY Chuck for their work in designing this. They put a lot of time and effort into testing. In any case, that is all I'm going to have for this video. If you would, make sure and give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And make sure to ring the bell down there in the dingus below so you get notified whenever I post any new videos. Y'all, have a great day. Thanks for watching. 73.